Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salamun alaykum, dear respected viewers all around the globe, dear Muslim brothers and sisters. Well, welcome to another episode and to another program, The Birth of Love. Here with me, Jawad Ferdosi, and my dear respected guest, Mr. Sheikh Daudi. Sheikh Daudi, welcome to your program. And uh, it is very great for us to have you here in this program. And uh, the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt, especially Muslims, uh, when it comes to the days prior to the Muharram, when it comes to Imam al-Hussein, the followers, they want to do something. They want to sacrifice everything that they have in the way of Imam al-Hussein. We want to commemorate the martyrdom of Imam al-Hussein. But we know at the same time that uh, there are different aspects of the holy life of Imam al-Hussein. We go and participate in the majalis, we shed tears, we try to be and participate in the majalis, but at the same time, uh, there is something that we feel the lack of those things in our actions. What can we learn from Imam al-Hussein? What are the things that are the most important things that we should bear in mind for the remembrance of Imam al-Hussein? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> I would like at the beginning to say hello to you and also the viewers, those who are watching us and inshallah are going to follow the, the series of the program about the birth of love. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I would like to say salam to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, as salam alayka ya Abu Abdullah, wa ala la rwah alati halat wa fina'ik, alayka minni salam allahi abadan ma baghitu wa baghiya layli wa nahar. This is very important to know Imam al Hussein alayhi salam at the beginning because we all know that, uh, you know, the status of uh, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was so specific. We see it at the beginning, we have to know Imam al Hussein. Who was he? Why, after 1400, you say 1400 years, uh, still the people are going to, you know, uh, remember what happened to Imam al Hussein. Salam. They are going to cry for him. And we think that maybe it is alive to our, you know, life. Those people who do not know Imam al Hussein alayhi salam went travel to Muslim countries, specifically to Shia communications. They may think that somebody right now, yesterday, has died. They have lost uh, so much great person yesterday, or maybe even today. They ask him, uh, they ask about him what happened. They say that, yeah, he was the the you know grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and war, was martyred 1,400 years ago. They say that really, after so much you know uh, distance of you know time after so you, many years after so many you centuries. again remember, and you know it is so alive. It is not among you know two, ten, twenty people. No, it is allowing the community. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. When we see that uh, when we approach the month uh, of Muharram, the day prior to Ashura and the day prior to Arba'in, we see that lots of people come and gather with a kind of enthusiasm. Yeah. You know, they're <coughs> full of love of Imam al Hussein, And they're just not saying by words, they're not just acting. No, they feel a great loss. So it is very important, my brother, at the beginning to know Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, who was Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and then to understand the status of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam according to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah in future I am going to, you know, talk about the affection of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam himself, his own characteristics, his own movement on the people, on great people who were not Muslims, the affection of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on non Muslims. What are they telling us about Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and how they have received, you know, the message of uh, Karbala? Yes, it, it is not Muslims. specifically for our, uh, for us Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that uh, it is a message. The message of Imam al Hussein is for everyone, for all human beings throughout the history and uh, throughout the centuries to come. 
it's a message for uh, humanity, for humanity, for seeking justice, for being right, for not uh, being deceived uh, by the words of Satan, yeah. so that uh, we can be sure that we are on the right path. Yes. So, uh, to clarify the situation, I would like to give an example. You suppose that something is in my hand. I ask you, do you like it or not? You well, say that at the beginning, I have to see it. I don't know. What is in your if, hand? What might be yeah, in your... If it is not clear for me that what you are holding in your hand... Yeah, of course. You, you cannot say that if you like it or not. Yeah. But when I show it to you, you see completely the things which is in my hand. And right. after that, I describe it. I say that, for example, I have received it for, from my mother. I love my mother so much. This is a very important gift or present from my mother at this occasion or so on, so on. You understand that this is a precious, you know, things that I am holding in my So mm -hmm. after that, you can give me your idea. So I think uh, this is very important at the beginning to know Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. We all know, but of course in different levels. But it is also very important to let the others to know Imam al Hussein alayhi salam as he was. So, because of this, from different you know angles, we exactly. are going to take a look at the life of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And also taking different lessons, inshallah, in this series of programs. And Allahu Akbar, every time that we go and participate in the majalis, when we hear the stories, when we hear the sacrifices that uh, they had done on that day, on that specific day, it's as if like we are hearing a new story. Mm -hmm. You know, <coughs> it's not the same old stories. Yes, yes. It's something that, like you mentioned, as if like it has happened the day before. Yeah. even today yeah. and yeah. Uh, when you look and when you go through the history books you know there were lots of battles throughout the history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there were lots of uh, great people so-called great people in the history in different continents different countries but none of them is like Imam al Hussein peace and blessings yeah. be upon yeah. Yeah. none of them is like Imam al Hussein who's being remembered every day every year in and out and it is something new and all the world all of them I believe that they are wondering what is Imam al Hussein? what has happened on that day that is continuing its way throughout all these centuries centuries yes so let me uh, you know take the audiences back to the history and find out uh, what happened there you see it was the time that Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was inviting people to the holy religion of Islam to the religion of peace to the religion of uh, you, you see the, the loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just he was telling the others nothing except one word to believe in God Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflahu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted them just to believe in the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was the one who has created you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you so you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on he was inviting people for 10 years Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam invited people at the beginning he referred to his own relatives as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him and after that little by little to the other people in Mecca but unfortunately you have studied the history you see that Unfortunately, there were some people who were thinking that Rasulullah sallallahu is going to take their own dunya, the word and whatever they have and they have received. They claim, they yeah. wrongly claim that uh, the Prophet of Islam is looking for power. Mm. He wants yeah. to get his hands yes. on the power to to be the leader. To the, or something not, like yes, this. Yes, not a spiritual leader. Yeah. So because of that, they couldn't tolerate it. They started to, you know, uh, make many different problems for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even, even, they decided to kill Rasulullah. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was belonging to a very famous family and 
a very famous tribe which was called Oraj, they couldn't kill him so easily because you see that at that time, if somebody was killed by the other people in you know in one tribe, uh, the the tribe couldn't tolerate it. They said that okay, you have killed someone from my own tribe, so we are going to kill someone from your own tribe. Because of that, they decided to you know kill Rasulullah in a different way. They choose one person, every person from every tribe. So they took part in this assassination, almost a representative from every tribe, almost all of the people who were in, in Mecca, they sent a representative to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they knew that uh, they couldn't easily kill uh, uh, Rasul, the Prophet of the Islam, Prophet. Rasulullah peace be upon him. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very strange and uh, very peculiar that when we see and we make comparisons that those people also in the present day we have seen those people mm -hmm. who want mm -hmm. to ruin yeah. the religion of Islam, Islam even today they want to make some uh, very um, biased accusations against the Muslims community against the Muslims against the Shia community throughout the world but we know for sure that as long as we are following the Ahlul Bayt, as long as we do believe in God, yes. none of those plans will ever happen. None of those yes. attacks uh, will ever uh, take any effect on the life of the Muslims and Shias. Uh, in the rest of the program, we're going to talk more about this situation, yes, about uh, those horrific people that were trying to kill the Prophet of Islam. Our dear viewers, we're going to be back with you very soon, so stay tuned. Welcome back, dear viewers. Well, you were talking about yes, uh, so those uh, plans. Yeah. We just uh, were talking about Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, but it is a need to go back to the history and to find out how was the situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was inviting people. They uh, even mm, wanted to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they took part in a kind of assassination. Every person from every tribe. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew the program. So, Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi alayhi salam, the father of Imam al-Hussain alayhi salam, started to sacrifice himself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to keep Islam. He said that, okay, you can uh, go to Medina uh, or somewhere else, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And he would rest in the place yeah. of the Prophet. And Ali alayhi salam said, I stay here in your bed. When they came, uh, yeah, at least they, they killed me. Uh, you are going to be safe. So they attack the house and they find out that someone else is in the bed of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other things that happened. It was the beginning of the immigration of Rasulullah from Mecca to Medina, which was the beginning of the, you know, calendar and the history of Islam. So, right now, we are going to count everything from that immigration. It was very important. The Hijra of Rasulullah from Mecca to Medina. So, it was the year four after the Hijra that Lady Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha, gave a very, very specific birth. Uh, it was a son. Uh, and it was the, the third of Sha'ban, and his name was Hussein. So the name Hussein, it was so specific. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So they, they took the child to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the, the angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to Rasulullah and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to name this child an a specific name the name of the son of Harun. Harun? Who was Harun? 
you see that Harun was the, uh, you know, the brother of Musa. And when Musa, Allah Nabi Salam, decided to go and fulfill his own mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send Harun. And we, we have in different ayahs in the Holy Quran that Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to set Harun as his own successor. So we see that he was the Vasi of Musa. And then Ali alayhi salam, who was, you know, the, we say, uh, the son-in-law of Rasulullah, also he was the Vasi of Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has announced it in different, you know, aspect of his own life. At least at the beginning of the invitation, when he went to his own relatives, at that time he announced that Ali alayhi salam is my brother, is my wasi, and is my successor, and after me, he is going to lead the ummah. So, exactly in some other rivaya, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announces that Ya Ali, anta minni bi manzilat Harun min Musa. He wanted to show that all the time. You see that in the Holy Quran it is written how Harun was the successor of Musa. Ali alayhi salam also is the successor of me. He is my own brother. He is my own wasi. And then Harun had a son. His name was Shubair. Shubbar and Shubair. Also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the two sons of Ali alayhi salam, that they were also the, the sons of his own daughter, the same name. But also in Arabic, Shubbar and Shubair, in some other languages, in Arabic, Hassan and Hussein, Shubbar and Shubair. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even called the same name that he was the son of Harun. The problem is actually giving different signs for two exactly. different people so that uh, he can show that these families, the commander of the faithful, has a very high status also in the eyes of Allah and in the eyes of me. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what is it that throughout the history, always we see that there are people who don't want to accept the truth, who don't want to see the sun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, when it is daylight, when, when it is something obvious, when you can see the light of sun everywhere, yes. but yes, they yes. try to deny it. Yeah. And it is not specific to that period of time. We can see it for ourselves that even in this day and age, there are people who are denying the sun. Yeah, unfortunately it is right, unfortunately. My brother, somebody asked me about Rasulullah himself. He told me that the Prophet of Islam has no, you know, miracle. He doesn't have any miraculous action except the Holy Quran. And the, the Holy Quran is a, is a text. We cannot call it a miracle. I didn't want to talk him about the miracle of our, the Holy Quran that we know that it was a great miracle if you want to talk about it, it takes, you know, several sessions to talk about the... Several uh, days, several, several centuries. Maybe, have yeah. Been up. We have some books in different, you know, so much volumes about the Holy Quran, that how Holy Quran is the miracle of Rasulullah. But anyhow, I asked him about the question like this. I said that you are Christian. He said, yes. I told him at the time that the, the Holy Prophet, uh, you know, Isa, Allah Nabiyana wa alihi wa alayhi salam, came to people, he showed them different miracles. Do people believe in Isa at that time? Of course not. Just a few. Just a few. And we see that it is not very important that if the Prophet is giving a miracle or not. Just the miracle is a kind of hujja. It is a kind of sign. It is not the whole things. 
it's related to the heart of the people. If they believe or not, unfortunately, the same thing also had happened Even at the time of Rasulullah. Even they didn't act uh, upon the will of the Prophet of Islam. Yeah. In several occasions, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, told people that whoever believes in me, whoever believes me as the Prophet of God, should believe yeah. in the commander of yes. the faithful, yes. Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. But what did they do to him? Not only uh, they didn't accept Amir al-Mu'mineen as the commander of the faithful, faithful, but also they began their harassment. They wanted to kill him. Yeah. They wanted to yeah. get rid of him. They couldn't tolerate so it. We yeah. see that uh, there are some certain facts that we don't want to make a biased assumption. No. Yeah. As someone who is sitting outside the circle, not as Muslims, not as Shias, as someone who is just reading the history, everyone can say that Prophet on several occasions has stated and restated about uh, Amir al-Mumini, al his status, yeah. the commander of the faithful. But I don't know why is it that Unfortunately. some people don't want to accept this is, uh, I think, the uh, situation that Imam al Hussein salam, was coming to the war. Unfortunately, some people who are watching, who are seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they they see the life of Rasulullah. Rasulullah is among them, okay, and also all the time, as you mentioned, is giving different signs. But unfortunately. Uh, yeah, they are completely, you know, ignorant, uh, ignorant, completely. Uh, in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions someone bukmun umyun. Yeah, they are also somehow blind. They cannot say something. They're they are dead. Cannot, yeah. it, it is very important. Yeah, as like as they are like this. So Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was named as. Shubair in Arabic, Hussein, okay, his brother who was coming to the world before him, uh, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, also Shubair or Hassan. This is, uh, you know, uh, the, the birth of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And also, we see that who was the mother of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. The mother of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was Lady Fatima to Zahra salam Allah alayha. Rasulullah all the time used to go to the house of Fatima to Zahra every day. You see that they were beside each other. If you travel to Medina, you find out the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is exactly beside the house of Lady Fatima to Zahra salam Allah alayha. Every day Rasulullah used to go and see, you know, his own daughter. And all the time, uh, you know, uh, was saying some uh, specific ahadith about Lady Fatima to Zahra. Um, unfortunately, we are running out of time, but yes, yeah. we know that how much time we dedicate to describing uh, the Immaculate household of the Ahl al Bayt, of the Prophet of Islam, it wouldn't be enough. Even if yeah. we have time yeah, yeah. for eternity, it wouldn't be it's enough. It's true. But uh, at least the thing is that. In these very short times, uh, we hope that uh, we can add a little bit more knowledge yeah. of uh, yes. the holy life of Imam al Hussein, of yes. the Prophet of Islam, to our dear and uh, beloved, uh, respected viewers all around the globe. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation, for being here. Thanks also. And, uh, our dear respected viewers, inshallah, in the other episodes, we're going to cover more and we're going to cover different aspects of the life of the Imam al-Hussein and the Prophet of Islam. So uh, with another program and another episode, we'll be in front of you. If you do have any say to... Thank you very much. Any, anything to say to our dear viewers, you can say and bear Yes, well. inshallah, we are going to continue our program with different, you know, parts of the life of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, inshallah, together. Thank you very much. Take care and do not forget us in your prayers.